Hey YouTube, Brandon Ascari here with another awesome and insightful episode of Ascari Digital's Content Creator Academy, where as you know, it is my goal to help educate and inspire you to being the best and most successful freelancer that I know you can be. First, if you haven't already, don't forget, give us a big thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you can, hit that notification bell, and don't forget to keep giving us a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below with any questions if you have them, and let's jump right in with some news in filmmaking. Indie filmmaking takes a blow as coronavirus brings down curtain on film festivals. Hmm, go figure. Rima Das, Bashkar, I'm not even going to bother trying. Weigh in on the topic, is coronavirus affecting the art and spirit of independent filmmaking vis-a-vis -vis cancellation of international film festivals till unforeseeable future? Uh, yeah, it's a problem. As the novel coronavirus pandemic caught the world off guard, movie making took a toll that is immeasurable in terms of loss to business, art, and craft. Now, while shooting and other entertainment-related activities resume cautiously in a phased manner, all eyes will be on how filmmakers adapt to the newly designed production and exhibition guidelines, keeping in mind safety and protection of their workers against the deadly COVID-19. Interestingly, ever since coronavirus reached India and it became clear somewhere during mid-March that production and exhibition of movies will have to be halted with immediate effect, regular news headlines featured stars' movies being postponed or extensive debates on how OTT was the new avenue for directors and producers to invest in. Discussions also ventured into the TV space as many shows were announced to be taken off-air amid the lockdown. Nagan 4 and Bayhad 2 being the prominent ones. Okay. So I think this is just pretty much common sense at this point, to be honest with you. We all know how the film festival circuit has been affected. Myself being someone who had a film festival, the Intercontinental Film Festival, check it out. Although it's, you know, not happening right now. I know what it's like to see what everybody's going through. So I understand from both sides as a creator, I want to get my work out there, but there's really no way to do that right now. And as a festival director, I'd like to be able to have these events so I could get the submissions coming in. I can put the show out there and create a business that gets more successful. But just right now, there's really nothing we could do about it. So we just have to survive and keep fighting, I guess. However, what got sidelined entirely during this crisis was independent filmmaking and how directors and producers who were invested in the spirit of parallel, non-commercial cinema would cope and secure funds for their next ventures amid the virus shutting down international film festivals, their only source of recognition, street credibility, and perhaps livelihood. See, this is where it becomes really difficult because we really have no other avenue for independent films other than the festival circuit. We are completely dependent upon exposure and getting ourselves out there by being accepted into these film festivals that will then show our work to hopefully some executives or something in talent acquisitions or whatever, where we would be able to get our projects picked up. So this is a huge damper and something that is going to be hard to bounce back from, especially if you're somebody who maybe has a completed film and is looking to finance it after the fact to get the deal to distribute their film. How are you going to do that? And maybe you took out a loan or something to be able to complete this film. And where's that going right now? So that seems to be one of the big issues that we're going to have as independent filmmakers going forward. Where's my beard? I miss it. It's gone. In order to better understand the nuances that connect indie filmmaking with traditional film festivals and how the two help sustain each other while creating a separate ecosystem of movie business, News 18 got in touch with Rima Das, Village Rockstars, Bulbul Bul Can Sing, Baskar Hazarika, and Devashish Makija, and I apologize if I butchered those, I'm sure I did, who shed light while debating among themselves on the significance of changes to the festival calendar on their respective career ambitions. So let's take a look at online versus traditional mode of film festivals, giving an instance of how this award-winning movie Amis was showcased in Texas, USA amid the ongoing pandemic via a digital film festival, which later led to a Zoom interaction with the audience there, Bhaskar says, what people need is to see your film and not you. 
So the online model that some of these film festivals have been taking to is a cost-effective and environment-friendly way of organizing. In a post-COVID-19 world, unless and until it is absolutely essential, one cannot step out of the house, and that will be the mindset of people across sectors and not just filmmaking. So from my perspective, online mode is not a problem as long as people see the film. <sighs> I disagree with that. You know, I think online is a worst case scenario, as it should be. It's not really an acceptable form. It's just when in doubt and you need to show it, it's the only choice. But you lose out on everything. You lose out on the networking. You lose out on the opportunity possibly to get your film seen. How are you going to know for sure if an executive's there if you don't see them? I'm sure they could figure out a way, but still, I don't know. It's just... For me, I'd be a little apprehensive about it. We've always been told that the online-only film festivals are film festivals that are just giving out laurels for whatever reason. So it usually is skeptical anyway. And then now that we're in a situation where we're forced into that, I also disagree with him on people not wanting to step out of their doors. I live in the Jersey Shore and our beaches are flooded and crowded with people. So it might even be an idea to do a film festival and still have a live screening, but hold it outdoors where you could get a much larger space, keep everyone socially distant, follow the guidelines, and you're allowed more people in outdoor settings, at least in New York and New Jersey, where I frequent all the time and live. So that might be an option. I don't know what it's like in the rest of the world where your restrictions are at, but it could be something that we play by ear, basically. Disagreeing with Bhaskar's point of view, Devashish says, The kinds of films that I make and the system that I rely on to find an audience and henceforth maybe to get a release is through a film festival. Without film festivals, my films don't survive. I am directly affected by the fact that film festivals till early next year will not have offline versions. When they go online, there is no concept then of a sales agent or a distributor or any of those platforms in Europe, US, or India that want to procure your films that win awards at festivals. In the absence of all of that, what am I making independent films for? If they are going to be consumed almost for free online, I might as well not make them. Rima, who does not have a film this year but was jury member at the Berlin Film Festival at Generation Section, takes a mid-path and adds, Films that premiered at Berlin Ale are now stuck and I feel really sad for these films that are not having a journey and are not traveling anymore. Those who had made their movies are totally confused right now. Although they are going online, but you cannot be happy about it. But at the same time, going online is also a good idea because we don't have any other options right now. The festivals are taking this decision to connect with the audience and they are doing their best. I have to agree completely with Devashish on this one because 100%, you lose out on most of it. Now, I do see what Reem is saying where they're saying that, okay, since we have no other options, we don't have any other choices, maybe we should consider running with this. I think it totally depends on your film, your goals with the film and where you want it to go. If you're looking for sales and distribution, it's not worth it. You should wait until maybe next year when all this dies down and we're able to have live screenings and everything like that again, because I don't see how films are going to get picked up and sold like they would normally during this situation. Where will parallel cinema go and which audience will watch it? About the underlying spirit of indie filmmaking getting affected with shutting down of film festivals, Rima says, I don't think the spirit is dying. It is just this year will be a bit difficult. We are not thinking that we will be in the lockdown forever or film festivals will not happen anymore. Only creatively challenging ideas will be that after lockdown, everyone will go through a mental simulation, so that might affect my motive behind writing a story in terms of its relevance in the coming times. I mean, I hope we don't get a slew of, like, lockdown movies because that's where everyone's mind is. Bashkar says that audience for a film has just shifted from cinemas to inside our homes. When you make an offbeat film, you want an audience to see it. More people see it, more are the chances of making a sale on the film. It's just that people are watching the film festival from their homes like they watch Netflix. It's not the same, but we disagree. Devashish explains the problem with home viewing by adding, Eyeballs in an online festival does not translate into financers making their money back, and if they can't make their little bit of money back, they don't want to make a second film, and in turn, I wait another three to seven years to make a feature film. 
So if I don't get to make those films, how can I talk about eyeballs when I haven't even made the film to get those eyeballs? With online festivals, there's no chance that they will make their money back. Now, onus is on me to recalibrate the kinds of films that I make. I agree with that wholeheartedly. That's where it's at. If it's going to be online, if it's going to be free or whatever, you're charging 10 bucks to do the whole film festival online. It's just not going to show the same profit potential that it would have had if you were selling individual screening blocks at full price. If you have audience reaction, see the one thing that we're missing out on that no one's talking about is when you have a talent acquisitions person in the actual room watching the film in a sold out crowd with a bunch of people and at the end that film gets a standing ovation or an ovation of any kind and they feed off of that energy that's when they realize and will make an impulsive offer to purchase the film that's where your chance really is is to catch them in the moment when you're on a film festival internet setup whatever chat room you're not going to have that impulse energy feeding circumstance which is going to be what causes most films to not get picked up all right we're going to skip over festival environment and just go straight to how exhibition and distribution of indie films is affected vis-a-vis -vis OTT and theatrical business. Bashkar says, once I get the festival buzz, I get theatrical release. That is what the model is for any independent filmmaker. I think there's not going to be a release for a long time because theaters will be shut and a release does not make any sense because they, indie movies, rarely make money. So it's not a big loss for us. Now, what is exciting is that OTTs do not function like that. They put value to the content. So conversely, indie filmmakers may be making more money through OTTs than they would have with a theatrical release. Interesting point, but I don't know. He adds, there are a lot of online platforms. Right now, if you Google search, there are chances that one platform will be showcasing your film. So for every Netflix, there are 10 indie OTT platforms coming up. There will always be an alternative platform for a theatrical business. You know, I understand that there's money to be made on these online platforms. It's just very, very, very rare. So we'll see. I don't know. Summing his dilemma with OTT and theater release, Devashish says, My films barely make it to an Amazon or Netflix, so with film festivals suffering, I am directly affected. He also gives example of his movie, Bosley, which has traveled almost one and a half years in the festival circuit, stressing on the fact that no streaming platform is willing to acquire it now, saying it's not an entertaining film. Ugh, that's a kick in the pants. He adds, despite lockdown, platforms have been turning it down because it is not a film that they think people will enjoy watching. Very selective, but, you know, could you imagine if you were Netflix or Amazon and you're getting bombarded with probably millions and millions of independent films that have been sitting in post-production all at once? I'd probably be a little selective, too. Rima further explains that OTT space is already shrinking, and in such a case, it will be difficult for indie movies to gain an audience. Financial factor is a significant thing. Bollywood movies, too, are coming to OTTs, and that is a big challenge. So Rima has a good point. Basically, what they're saying is that they are being bombarded, like I just thought. And the good thing, though, there is a positive in this, and that is that Bollywood films, independent films, stuff like that, since it costs much less to make, it's easier for these production companies and Netflixes and Amazons and other streaming services to purchase because it's cheap. You could shoot a feature film, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, 250,000, as opposed to a studio made film that's 10, 20, 30 million dollars. So they could just pick that up for double, triple what you paid, still come in way cheaper than it would cost them to go through their channels to do it and have more films and a bigger catalog to show. So I do think that there is more room for creative films to get on these platforms. But the problem is, I think right now there's just too many at one time. So it's going to be hard to get shown on there. Anyway, what do you think? I'm really not sure what's going on with the industry. I have no idea where we're going to go next. You know, every day you hear something else. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and perspective on this. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you know Monday and Wednesday when the episodes do air. And in the meantime, everybody, as you know, I will see you.